Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lone Birds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by BitCotton Fiend Phone, music by 3chainlinks.com, and it's a new month. We didn't do, we only did one show in all of April, um, so we're going to do one for, for May, which is the uh, trend lately, uh, and that's actually going to go in the store. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact them. Hopefully, it'll be in by the end of the week, but who knows, so I'm here with Steve Miller. Miller, uh, bless your grind. Am I doing it right? You are doing it right. Your okay. your grind is blessed. My grind is blessed. Every grind is every blessed. Okay. So we have a couple of stories, but you wanted to talk about sports betting <laughs> because nothing's more yeah. in-cap than sports betting. I shredded last night on my NBA picks. Uh, I was all over the Oklahoma City Thunder to cover the seven and a half point spread. And then I also had a small position on them to win. And they shot the world in one after getting blown out by like 30 points the night before. Because such is the beast that is the NBA playoffs. Uh, and sitting here having a conversation with Jim Jesus about sports is like Jim Jesus bringing me on the show to discuss the inner workings of a female vagina. Uh <laughs> And I understand that, and that's cool, but I'm still gloating in my $30 worth of victory because I'm not, I'm not a big stakes guy. Uh, when, I, when I throw it on money on an NBA game, it, I will put down literally the minimum amount required for me to care enough to watch the, the entirety of the game, which is normally about, like, at most the cost of a movie ticket, but usually around the cost of a meal. Like, if I've got, like, a good, like, five dollar like chipotle burrito riding on the game then i will care whether the point total covers or not but uh two bucks yeah you know that's we're really talking like only a cup of coffee at 7-eleven then and yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be really hard to keep to keep me in that one but yeah generally like in the five to eight dollar uh range but i went full in i put 30 bucks on the oklahoma city thunder last night and yeah, nothing but cash and tickets. Uh, cue it up, Jim. I think so. I, I think what I'm gonna have to do is every time you have every time you bet, I'm gonna have you send your sports picks. I'm gonna bet like one dollar because I can actually legally, quote unquote, legally gamble. Uh, here well, in Vegas. Yeah, I, I, and, and that's we'll what we do it. here on the Lawberts. We have we have a we have a we have a straight dude with a YouTube account from Vegas uh, explaining to the gutter faggot from Philadelphia <laughs> that he doesn't know anything about sports gambling and needs his expert guidance. No, because All I right. want to make a little bit of money. Because if you can do it, I'm testing you whether or not you can do it because if you can do it i would like to make a little bit of money because I, I i like hockey but i don't know enough enough about it to like actually place bets and actually win the problem you're getting at me late in the season though because my my real specialty like where i make my money is nba point totals i'm very very good at predicting the pace of nba games and if you can predict the pace you could pretty much predict like where the total is going to wind up okay. because it's going to be a much lower scoring game if they hold the ball until there's three seconds left on the shot clock every single possession versus if they're just running and gunning that the entire time and like you watch these teams enough or in my case if you like work at a crappy concert venue and like sit stand there and listen to all the games and like are familiar with the pace that all the teams play at then you can pretty accurately predict what defenses are coming and you know what number is a good number uh in terms of what to expect and you can act thusly and I've been trying to branch out into baseball with with only with totals, not with sides. I I very rarely will try to guess the winner of a game or not. Last night was one such a one such occasion, but that was only because of the insane number of points being offered me to do so. Uh, it was again all based on the number. 
So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a market. It's like anything else. And there's good numbers, there's bad numbers. And then uh, I also made quite a bit of money last year on the WNBA, which is the true sign you're a degenerate gambler. <laughs> when it's when it's when it's May 3rd and you're like, oh man, just one week and one day until WNBA season begins because you get some really juiced fat point totals on there. Because people that go to Vegas like betting uh, overs on things. And betting the over on women's college basketball is uh, is generally not a very good proposition. Uh, it, it goes about 50 50 like everything else, but they don't score a lot of points. So, what look you, you think? Oh, like, oh, 88 points. Like, that's not that much. But yeah, in the WNBA, 88 points is kind of a lot. Yeah. Have you seen so, these women that play basketball? You can understand why they don't score a lot. But bless them. And my <sighs> yeah. uh, shout out to Brittany Griner if you're listening. Brittany Griner is the the big WNBA star. Uh, <laughs> Brittany, I I fell in love with you as an athlete the day you went full NBA athlete. I I knew there was social equality between the NBA and the WNBA when you got arrested for beating up your spouse. Uh, <laughs> I said. I said, here's somebody who could do everything a male NBA player can do. You beat up your spouse. Who is, say it with me, another WNBA player. And, yeah. Bless her grind. Love Brittany Griner. What, easily one of my favorite athletes in all of sports, I would have to say. Okay. So, uh, yep. we, we got a couple of stories. We should just hop into one of them. So, <laughs> so Donald, Donald Trump. Of course, we're going to do Donald Trump clickbait, right? We have to. Because yeah, it, we, we actually have a list about Donald Trump, and there's actually one weird trick that keeps our Donald Trump list worthy. Yeah, and that's accusing <laughs> Ted Cruz's father of hanging out with, was it, Lee Harvey Oswald, the JFK uh, assassin. Uh, JFK existed, right? It's just Lincoln that didn't? Yeah, J JFK existed. The thing about JFK having a secretary named Lincoln, I don't think happened, but okay. th that's the extent of my A-Lincolnist involvement. Also, since we're clickbaiting this, I would like to note that Lee Harvey Oswald didn't shoot Catalina's thought. He actually uh, totally destroyed him with just one tweet. <laughs> All right, so Trump was <laughs> Fox News. Uh, you know, he does like these little call-in shows or whatever. And he said, you know, his father uh, was uh, with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald being, uh, you know, shot. I mean, the whole the thing is ridiculous. What this is right pr what this is right prior to his being shot and everybody uh, and nobody even brings it up. I mean, they don't even talk about that. It was even reported and uh, nobody is talk. No one's talks about it, but I think it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And that man can go do uh, go and do that. What he, what he's saying, um, you know, a little bit of word salad there, but <laughs> still, it's pretty how good. dare you go out and do and say things when your father was standing next to somebody disreputable. <laughs> Clearly a communist, right? Uh, Trump is alluding to the National Enquirer story. <laughs> yeah, that's a credible source. Uh, claiming that Cruz's Yo, they were father... right about John Edwards, were they not? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, didn't and here was the thing. Everybody called John Edwards a faggot, and I said, nah, John Edwards is not a faggot. People don't know the difference between a faggot and a southerner. And uh, it, it's like a very... It's Especially like the rest, aristocrat, the aristocrat kind of page of. from Thirty Rock. Yeah, yeah. like because you might look at Bobby Jindal, governor of Louisiana, listen to him talk and be like, "Oh wow, that dude is the mouth side of a glory hole personified," and <laughs> you'd be incorrect. Uh, he's actually just a cuck. Uh, so, yeah, and Jeffrey Tucker has that kind of people accuse him of being gay. And it's like, no, that's just kind of the, the how the rich people talk in South in the South is very yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah. and and if if Jeffrey Tucker were gay, it would be a bolo tie, not a bow tie. Get it right. Yeah, get with would, the times. And he'd be at Whole Foods, not McDonald's. Oh no, you you eat McDonald's. No, we said he's gay, not a faggot. Okay, uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Showing up at Whole Foods is is what makes you a faggot. Yeah. So Raphael Cruz was a mystery man uh, photographed with this Lee Harvey Oswald picture, <laughs> as handed out by the uh, Fair Play for Columbia uh, Cuba Committee, a pro Castro group. Um, Cruz may have been somehow mixed up with the JFK assassination. I can't wait until the day I get called up to the pro Castro group from the amateur Castro group. <laughs> well, you're going to have to wait in line for that one. Um, yeah, well, luckily, B Bernie's got my back. He says there actually are jobs at the end of that job line. Yeah. You know, in America, if you go if you go inside, if, you know, if you want a job, you know, the, the rich people take all the jobs and the poor people starve to death. 
Still looking for that statistic that shows that people are starving to death because of poverty in the United States. I still can't find it. I've been looking. I've been looking really hard. I, I put I put the challenge out there. Show me where it's at, and I, I can't find it. Um, Most of the people around here that look like they're starving in my neighborhood aren't starving to death. They're starving of meth, which yeah. is a, <laughs> a, 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 a very fine distinction. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, the time, any time I've ever seen people that look like they live in third world countries is because they're, you know, you know they also can't stop moving, <laughs> which is not a sign of someone who's starving. Uh, it's someone who's uh, who, who's gacked out. Um, so the Kennedy assassination is, uh, theorists have run with uh, have run for the run for the White House before John Kerry, an exa- for example. Doubts a lone gunman position, but I think it's the first time that a leading presidential candidate has implied his rival's father has uh, been involved in the affair. Uh, it's 2016, still full of surprises. Oh, current year, still full of surprises. Or, or, of course, this is reason. Of course, they're going to current year, right? Right. Uh, that that's not as that's not that blatant of a current year. They weren't saying that something needs to happen because of a year or expressing disbelief that something's happening in current. Well, that was a, a mild expression of disbelief. Yeah, it was but like it's, it's 2016 and we're still hard. talking about the JFK assassination. Uh, but that kind of does that was follow. much the point. I think yeah. I think their I think their I think their main point is it's been the election year has been a little insane and. uh and yet the year is still current. I think like there's there's an undercurrent of current. Okay. But yeah. Well, it, you know, it's yeah. current year and people are still But that kind of does follow. It's like it has been this long and we still haven't gotten anything substantial out of these JFK truthers. Um yeah. at least that's my opinion. I don't know, I'm probably going to get some hate mail. You don't, you think it was you believe the official story? Um okay. I believe the official story. And I believe the official story. <laughs> No, so, not really. I, I I do. Uh, if you ever flipped through, was it Vince Vince Lego, Legosi's book? I think that's his name. He just passed away. No, v- Vince Bugliosi. You're thinking Vince. of Bella Lugosi, who yeah, was who was who, who was Dracula, <laughs> yeah. and also in Plan Nine from Outer Space. Yeah. Which, uh, by the way, did you see the Ed Wood movie? <laughs> Frankenstein yeah. is all grunting. <laughs> Anyways, that was brilliant. Um, yeah. If you kind of flip through that book, it has a lot of great stuff in there. Uh, it's impossible to read. And anytime I ever hear someone say like, oh, I've actually read that book. I'm like, bullshit. It's like 15, 1500 pages. And it's, it's like a fucking encyclopedia, like a one volume. So your point is because the book is really long and verbose, Lee Harvey Oswald did it. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. But no, there's a lot of stuff. If you, if you like, okay, what about this point? They have a chapter about that point. And it's kind of good to go through like, like that. But to anyone who just says, oh yeah, I read the entire book. No, you didn't. <laughs> I don't think anybody's read that. I don't even think the author read the entire book. He just wrote it and was like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Like, a lot of these conspiracy people aren't, like, especially the older ones are not as YouTube only as the younger kids that are just, like, learned all their science from memes and things like that. Mm. But I feel I used to, I, I used to, I used to work, oh, this is sad, but I used to do a lot of comedy shows at conspiracy things, which turned out to not be a winning formula because uh, conspiracy theory is a close cousin to activism. And activism, as I've said before and will repeat now, is the opposite of comedy. Uh, <laughs> there is no diametrical opposite more further away from laughter than the practice of activism. Because what about the Shire believe- Choir? Because activists believe that if you are doing activism, it ha- that if you are laughing, by God, you better be laughing for some sort of cause. You better not be doing that recreationally. Uh, it- it's medicinal only to cure the ills of society. Uh, I think laughing at the state's best form of activism. I'm sorry, it is. Uh, laughing at all these people is hilarious. And it's fun. And it's productive. And, and it annoys me. Is. Is mockery yeah. is a great tool. Uh, but... Like, th- there's more to humor than just mockery, first of all. And uh, it, something need not be either mockery or directed at somebody in order to be funny. There's some shit that's just generally funny, and there's nothing wrong with that, and it's not a distraction, and it's not uh, you not focusing on what the real issue is. No, it's you fucking laughing. 
Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, oh, I can't stand people who always go on about like, oh, this is all just distraction from the main issues. And then, you know, like oh, sports or, or politics, you know, don't don't pay any attention to that. But then they'll spend like hours droning on about like other government policies. And it's like, well, what's well, then what's the why, why are we even talking about this? If that's a, just a distraction, right? Like where they'll talk about like drone strikes and stuff. And it's like. But I thought we weren't supposed to be talking about these these government policies and stuff like this because it's a distraction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's a distraction if you hold it right. Yeah, anything you can point any kind of thing is a distraction. Um, they're drone strikes. Why weren't you making videos about Sandy Hook truth? Yeah, exactly. Uh, wake up, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, it is it is six a.m. on a Wednesday. You better get up and you better be angry at, at the Illuminati. Yeah, I, I kind of hold the. Uh, uh, I'm not even going to say his name. Uh, but <laughs> there's there's a view uh, that's kind of like why even bother talking about, you know, whether or not the government government was implicated in one death that was spurious and has you know has like scant amount of evidence and you know it just in in the end it'll just make you look crazy to most people when you can just prove like oh yeah but here they are they're fully admitting that they went overseas and bombed all these people why why are we even talking about the one conspiracy like the 911 thing like why are we talking about 3000 people that died in the United States if the government was implicated in it and, and going through all this weird kind of evidence and just making yourself look crazy to most people when you can just say like world war 2 vietnam Look at all the people that died there. And they admit it. They admit it. They did do it. So why even waste your time with that? That's kind of my view on conspiracy theories. But they're also kind of bullshit at the same time. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got I got, I got, got blamed. So I, I for Freedom Feeds listeners, you may know this. But I had a socialist say he was going to punch my fucking face in recently. <laughs> and uh, I, I said, okay, great. Because I've met with this dude before in real life. And he is not a shall we say he, he like he's probably got like some sort of he's not a strapping young lad yeah okay. he's he's a he's a he's a small person and i and he was also he's also from like a nicer part of philly and like very internet tough guy and i was certain that once i got him face to face there was absolutely no way he was going to really fight me but i'm like this <laughs> will make for hilarious video if he does show up so i say all right here come here i'll meet you there uh, let's, you know, let's, let, let's duke it out, uh, over a meme. <laughs> and, uh, was this, was this the, the meme that made PolitiFact? No, oh, this is not a meme, a, a, a meme, a meme that made PolitiFact, but he said, it, he, he messages me and says, Hey, uh, bus fare is too expensive. Uh, <laughs> can you come to my neighborhood uh, so that I could beat your fucking face in down here, uh, basically like you, 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 you've got a trans pass. Uh, you know, you, the entire city's your oyster riding around on these buses that are filled with crackheads. So why don't you come down to my neighborhood and collect your ass beating? Because <laughs> I'm a socialist and I can't afford the public transit. And uh, Jeremy Hengler, God bless him, freedom fiend, friend of show, uh, says the funniest thing he's ever said. Which is wow, you're Ancom Ball from Anarchy Ball, but in real life. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah. Bless, but so bless Jeremy's grind. Francis P. McCloskey, who has since blocked me on Facebook, the socialist who was trying to fight me, is a great Facebook ad. He is batshit crazy. All his posts are in three languages. Uh, to show off how many languages he knows and it's all about the greatness of socialism and if you ever ask him to prove anything uh it will be well i've already said da -da 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 that socialism is a superior system you jerk off uh and, and it'll get all bad uh and yeah but definitely a great ad you'll probably get blocked by him in a couple weeks but maybe he'll he will offer to come uh to let you come to his neighborhood to get your face fucking beat in over memes, if you're lucky, if you're lucky. Yeah, I, li I like the, uh, the 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 kind of uh, RBE Venus Project type people. Where they're just like, well, you know, what do you propose? <laughs> they don't even try to defend it because they know it's indefensible. They just go like, well, what do you believe? Well, that's stupid, and because that's stupid, I'm right. Logical fallacy. Yeah, they're they're huge on the erroneously uh, uh, 
applied wi- li- link to a wiki article about a logical fallacy. They love that. People oh. in the Venus pro- people in the Venus project love love love, love. it's it's everything is that because if you have any any sort of criticism of their shit then yeah. Uh yeah, the ones I just love the ones that just list off logical fallacies. Like just put a whole list of logical fallacies. Like, well, they don't even tell you like what what you're saying is a logical fallacy. Like, oh, well, you said this, and that you know d- means this. So that's a, that's a logical fallacy. They don't do that. They just go straw man, uh, uh, false dichotomy. Uh, just list them off, and then you just go like fallacy, fallacy, and they're just like shit. <laughs> but yeah, um, they do they do that, uh, and then the uh, whole. Well, you know, what do you support? Oh, you're a libertarian. Well, libertarian will just is just basically fascism. So therefore, you have to support RBE yep. because they're the only other the choice. But you know, if you try to any, do any kind of further refutation, I'm just going to list off logical fallacies because that's an argument. So here's something I do as a comedian that I might recommend that people listening might try uh, yourselves. So whenever somebody is trying, do. yeah, I'm, it's it's an offering. When uh, when someone's trying to fight with you all upon the Internet, <laughs> start agreeing with everything they say. Uh, and then they will accuse you of going back on your word. And then you just agree with them more. And there are certain sorts of types of people that this will drive absolutely insane. Uh, not, they hate nothing more than when you agree with them. I agree with that. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're absolutely right. Oh yeah. Furthermore, you have won the internet, uh, <laughs> and I bask in your rightness. Uh, I hand you a football. Please spike it. You know, <laughs> like yo. Now that you've dunked the ball, please don't hang on the rim because you are an obese individual, <laughs> and that might cause the glass backboard to shatter. Yeah. Triggly. You're like 1993 Shaquille O'Neal. See, I can't drop these references with Jim Jesus. No, so, I get it. So, I want some of that. So, I listen, want some of no, that juicy so, somebody shack get, meat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you were also like meat. in the prime age for like being exposed to that media because like that was the ultimate like marketed to kids in like fourth through ninth grades moment was like when you had this dude and he just, he, he just breaks the backboard from like slamming the ball too hard. That's the ultimate Mountain Dew Doritos <laughs> white kid wearing a starter hat moment. Like, bah! Like, that's going to be me. I'm going to be seven foot two, 350 pounds in black. That's exactly what's going to happen. Boom, I will be shakalaka. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Boom, shakalaka. He's on fire. <laughs> oh, from NBA downtown. Jam. It was a beautiful game. That's about the time that I kind of dropped off of basketball was when Michael Jordan started winning all those championships. And it's like, well, this is boring now. You know, that, that was my team, the Chicago Bulls. And then they actually made it like yeah. they actually made their dynasty. And I was like, well, this is boring now because my team it's always all been Cleveland for me. Always Cleveland, always Cleveland, always Cleveland. And Cleveland. The, the Cleveland Browns, their shitty football team are, in the words of my neighbor, uh, Damn, Steve, them shit ass Browns, you ride or die niggas, and I don't know why. Yeah, well, uh, what's with what's with what's with what's with uh, sports teams in Ohio that are like, oh, we're the Reds and the Browns. We got fascists and we have commies as a baseball team and, a, and uh, that everybody. Team. Every, well, you see, here's the thing: is the state voted for several Republicans, so everybody in the state is super super racist. So the uh sports teams all reflect that racism and only electing leftist candidates can remedy ohio of its ills <laughs> hashtag artists for bernie uh hashtag mathematicians for bernie hashtag won't have to count too high <laughs> bernie said he doesn't care about math did you hear about this did i hear about this bernie said he doesn't care about math did you hear no uh, well, yeah, he's going to have to because Bernie, the Bernie math doesn't add up. Did you see that Chicago? Not Chicago. That, <laughs> what the fuck? Did you see that uh, that college humor? Like once in a while, they create something good amongst their sea of shit. Uh, but they did one where they were talking about the Bernie math and it was just gold. It was just absolute gold. My, see, here's OK. College humor is a lot better than its rival site. Funny or die. And my problem with funny or die is as follows. They never make anybody pay on the or die portion. I want to see people being publicly executed for not being funny <laughs> enough as a warning to everybody else. Yeah. 
the, the, he who there, cannot there be could named. be no there could be no room for hackery in a libertarian social order. They will have to be gathered up and physically removed, so to speak, in so far as physical removal, so to speak. Um, yeah, uh, he who cannot be named has one on there, and I, I I tried I tried my best to like try to get it to die. I have not checked whether or not it's died, but it, it was so bad, it was so terrible. I don't even know why <laughs> it was even why he even bothered putting it up there, but this was before he was like super famous. It was when he just started talking about killing cops, but yeah. Um, oh, that yeah the 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 comedy content of that to a normal everyday person who's not obsessed with Rothbard is just uh, huge. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, nothing nothing is funnier to regular everyday people than a cop murder. What a <laughs> dumb fuck. You see, we oh, have a very niche market, though, and we understand we have a very niche market. <laughs> you know, and caps who love making fun of self de- uh, deprecating <laughs> and caps yeah. is our target demographic, and there and there's quite a bit of them. But it, we, I'm not going to put this on funny or die. This is this will not survive. <laughs> this is definitely like, why do they keep talking about this Jeffrey Tucker dude? Why do they keep talking this gay accent? They would not understand it. But we get it. We get it. Uh, we yeah. you know we could talk about the right stuff. Dot biz. We understand. We do this. it for the fans, not the critics. Yeah. <laughs> Should we talk about this now? Uh, you know who the right stuff. Dot biz is right. Have you are you familiar with these guys? The <laughs> the right the right the, the right stuff. They accidentally left out the second s in ss. Dot biz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the right stuff. Um, the right stuff. Um, they're basically the right stuff. Dot biz. <laughs> they're kind of like, oh, they are like kind of the alt right. There, a lot of them are ex libertarians. I remember they actually wrote an article way back when. That sounds like a relationship you have with someone. Yeah, we're ex libertarians. Yeah, it's, 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 I blocked them on Facebook. We're not libertarians yeah. together anymore. That's a kind of a funny concept. <laughs> libertarians together sounds like a shitty dating website where you find <laughs> a dude that has like a ill fitting t shirt and a shitty facial hair pattern and likes girls with dark hair bangs <laughs> is that a Josie Wells reference I don't know anyways um, that's my wife <laughs> I know so uh, so the right stuff that biz like they're I think they were like one of the first like alt right right websites right or uh, not one of the first but like probably one of the ones that were more popular so to speak um, they they had like uh, was it the 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 NRX, what is it? The um, Munchus Moldbug guy, uh, Dark Enlightenment. They had that, and then they actually had the right stuff, and then this came out, and this was kind of making it more popular amongst the kind of edgelord libertarian type crowd. And yeah, so they did a lot of Trump stumping and stuff like this. But they wrote this article, and it's probably going to get taken down like their like their quote unquote critique of anarcho capitalism that was just fucking painfully bad. Uh, but I guess they're now they're kind of turning on Donald Trump. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I think they figured Strange out what fellows. Yeah. I think they figured out what we all have known for like the whole time. Like this guy's a huge con artist <laughs> who is like a Democrat, uh, who's just kind of writing on the, 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 the populist sentiment at the time. Um, so we wrote this article. Man, it's almost like right? people, uh, it's almost like people were looking for, see, <sighs> Here's the problem is like the way the media has elections set up now is that it's kind of, it's so much like a season of American Idol that you don't want to not have a contestant to root for. Right. Yeah. Like you don't want to like just watch the shit at home and like not be able to call in and vote for your favorite John. And then the studio picks whoever wins anyway. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I was going to have to root for anybody, it would have been Rand, but it's not because like I want him to be president or I like him or he is he's like the best candidate. Was, or because I consent to a social contract. Oh, yeah. let's get into it. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, let's go three hours. <laughs> yeah. Non aggress me, Jim Jesus. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's just more somebody, like I, I, I'm I would, not even if he, was, if he was president, I'd I would be the least sick of all the uh Republicans being president. But that's you know. I'm not even bullshitting you. Somebody Facebook messaged me a little while ago and they said, Hey, Speaking uh, of which, ding. I have a I have a webcast where uh, do you want to come on and have a liberty chat for about a half hour? <laughs> and I nearly pissed myself. That was the funniest thing I'd ever a liberty chat. God, this is what my life has become. Come liberty <laughs> chat with me. Not aggress me so hard. 
Oh, yeah. Rothbard me right in the Mises. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, the right stuff... <laughs> The, Which is the interesting. Right stuff. They they have like different like uh, backgrounds. So every time you go to it, you have a different background. The one I have right now says like no colors allowed. Sometimes it's Buchenwald. Sometimes it's Auschwitz. Sometimes it's Dachau. Yeah, but I, I got the no colors allowed um, this time. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Since summer of last year, the alt-right has been in awe of Donald Trump's presidential run, which has taken both the left and the conservative elite. Um, oh, taken on both the the left and the conservative elite. But Donald Trump honest about his position. Is Don, Donald Trump honest about his positions or does he simply want the deal? Meaning he wants to tell voters what they want to hear and then he gets to sit in the Oval Office. Before you say it to yourself, he's not Hitler 2.0, but he's going to do a lot of good stuff nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, they actually really want Hitler. A lot of these guys are, are national socialists. Uh, anyways. That sucks. Yeah, and click off the article. Or he's not going to be Hitler 2.0, but he's going to do a lot of a lot of good stuff nonetheless. And click off the article. Let's have a look at Donald Trump's political history. And I'm not going to read the entire thing, but we can kind of talk about like some of the points they bring up. Like, uh, you know, he's been a Democrat all of his life since 1987. Uh, he he went to the Republican Party and stayed there until '99, which he joined Ross Perot's pop, uh, Populist Reform Party. And then he left uh, because of the white nationalist David Duke, the communist Le- Leona, Fury, or whatever, and paleoconservative Pat Buchanan. Um, and so he tr- he obviously lied about he didn't know who David Duke was. So, yeah, I think we all kind of knew that he was a Democrat the whole time. Uh, they're just now figuring this out. The alt-right is fucking brilliant, right? They're, they're too busy jacking off to anime to figure out their dude is a Democrat. <laughs> and the sound of their own voices. That's even more powerful than anime. Yeah. Well, some of them do a very good impersonations, even though they only do one impersonation, which is uh, a, a typical New York Jew. <laughs> the parodies are funny. Know, like, I just like I just find their humor so shitty. Like you, you I thought you liked fat. Nothing counter- like the, the shit they do is like just straight up. Like uh, some of their memes are all right. And I'll give them that. But like. On a personal level, everything goes back to like, oh, helicopter rides. Oh, you're a cuck. And they they have like three lines and then they just fucking run them into the ground. And honestly, it feels like being at a goddamn comedy open mic. Like when you're like around these people because it's edgelord humor done in a forced way by somebody who's not attractive and... Uh, but like thinks that they're going to make it by like some unseen power in the universe where there's just going to be this chasm of demand for like the demand for the opinion of shitty white dudes. Uh, and yeah, very similar to a comedy open mic talking to people from the all right. Yeah. Um, this kind of reminds me of that cartoon. Like I made this all right robot and it just has like a robot and it's just going cock, 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 cock. And he's like, why? And he has this look on his face like, hmm. Good point. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but the what about the counter signals for fashy or counter signal means for fashy goys? So that's that's kind of the alt, uh, same guys. That's their best work, I'd say. Yeah, the same guys. Um, and then you have like Marocchio's parodies, which are funny. I'm sorry, they're 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 soul destroying, and you feel bad laughing at them, but they're fucking funny. I don't think I, I don't think I'm familiar with these. I will send. I will put some links in the in the in the notes. You have to watch the Auschwitz one, uh, with the frozen Auschwitz one. It's fucking beautiful. Okay, it's terrible though. Uh, well, wait, why would it turn? Why would it turn into a solid? Didn't most of it turn into a gas? <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> so um, so he's talking about how Trump's view has uh, changed in the last decade or so. He was praising Barack Obama. Uh, and then in a recorded interview with the New York Times, he said that you know he's willing to lax his review uh, his views on the wall, which is like his central point, right? They, they think it's the only thing he's actually said that actually is like of substance of what he's going to do in office, which is build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. But now he's he's even admitted at least allegedly admitted to the New York Times that you know it's not true. Now he's moderating his position and he's willing to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to pay for it. Frankly, I could do it. I he's, he can't. I don't think he can afford it out of his own pocket. It's not my money anyway. Yeah, it's, it's someone else's money. Um, let's see. Um, 
My point is to not accuse Donald Trump of outright dishonesty when he talks about building a wall or deporting Mexicans. He may be serious about that, but the point is that given Trump's long history of flip-flops, such, uh, such as supporting an assault weapons ban and then opposing it, uh, making wacky declarations such as wanting Oprah Winfrey to be his running mate and then cancel his 2000 presidential run, we can't know with any degree of certainty what, he, what he's serious about, which is true, you know? Gee, shocking. Yeah. Uh, you know, he flip-flops. Wow, he's an actual establishment. He is a total establishment dude, by the way. He has a long, long Cuck history Yeah, of, like, hanging out with Democrats and Republicans and giving them money and, you know, doing his bit. Because it's New York, right? New York real estate, that's how you roll. You have to be in bed with the government. It's just how it works. Um. Is Trump in is Kensington a, real estate? You have to be in bed with an Asian man and have enough money to buy a, a, a Prius, and then you, and then and then you could be a land baron in Kensington. Yeah, well, they, they were auction. They auctioned off a piece of land near here. It was like large enough to build a house on, and it went for twenty eight hundred bucks recently. <laughs> so I guess he also was critical of Mitt Romney's plan to remove illegal uh, illegal aliens via self deportation as mean spirited. Um, cost him the ever most, uh, ever important, uh, I can't, well, uh, uh, a frijolero vote. <laughs> That's the, the Spanish version. Uh, this, this article, this, this, this website's terrible. Uh, what's likelihood? No, the right yeah. stuff. Biz is awful. I, what? I, I, this is news to me. Revelations <laughs> for every, for all the podcast listeners. Wow. Something you never could have figured out. Do you know they actually have a card in my uh, Libertarians Against Humanity? It was like one of the first. I think it was actually in the first edition. <laughs> I actually put them in Did there. Did the Daily Stormer get a card as well? No, 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 no. Because I knew that this at the time was like sucking in a lot of Libertarians. So I was like, eh, it's not when I, in in my In my administrative duties uh, running the hashtag please donate Facebook page, someone turned me on to the fact that the guy who runs the Daily Stormer, whose name I don't remember, uh, is constantly begging for people to give him money so that he can just write articles about white supremacy all day long. Yeah, he's he, he, you know white people are so su- supreme. Yeah, hashtag please donate. Yeah, yeah, that's the best model, right? What is with all these people? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, oh, we're so smart. Hashtag please donate. Like, why don't you monetize it, idiot? What's what's the likelihood of Trump's views on immigration changing so drastically? Because, because then the market would actually decide, and yeah. You, and yeah, that and that's 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 a lot more harsh to Free know that like, subsidies. hey, your your website gets thirty fucking visitors, and uh, they stay for ten seconds a piece. Uh, so you want to monetize this? What we Google recommend is that you go get fucked. Uh, like that's really hard to hear. What's not as hard to hear is. Uh, you know, I'm going to go end human trafficking, folks. So uh, this is money. this was actually pretty funny. It made me laugh. A shining. Ex- they're talking about how how like now, uh, you know, how he was so establishment and they all loved him. And then the incident he started running for president. Now they're all calling him a racist and a Hitlerist. Um, and what now that what they're calling Pat Buchanan or they're doing Hitlerist? what they did. With, yeah, they're do- I don't know. I think he's Hitlerer, but I don't know if he's the Hitlerist. Yeah, because they're kind of like comparing him to Pat Buchanan's run. It was at 92. No, he ran 92. a couple times. It was 92 and 96. That's when they were really hitting on him. And then he ran third party in 2000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, a shining example of Washington, D.C.'s most popular dance. The cuck step. That was that, that was rather funny. I, I lolled. You didn't. I think I I think that'll prove to be the literary high point of the article. Call it a hunch. <laughs> but does Donald have any radical views? Um, I guess they're also pointing out that he was like good fans or good good fans. Either good friends with uh, Nelson Mandela. Um, Trump said of him, Uh-oh. Nelson Mandela and myself have a wonderful relationship. He was a special man and will be missed. And there's like a picture of him Ooh, and his wife. Yeah, with Nelson man, Mandela and saying something nice about a, about a world leader who just died. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Well, to be Nelson Mandela was <laughs> has a very mixed history. Uh, he does some good oh, things. He does some absolutely horrible things. <laughs> some, some damning things. Uh, the necklacing was was always fun. Going back even further, in two thousand uh, ninety seven, uh, he was praised. Uh, uh, Praised by none other than Abe Foxman. I don't know who that is. Oh, he's he's a he's a steward of anti-Semitism. 
against anti-Semitism. Yeah. And yeah, then of I course think he runs some Jewish organization. Oh, or yeah. And then so he just kind of goes on about how uh, had his lawyers taunt the white uh, um, the white residents of Palm Beach by sending them copies of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, a miscegenation propaganda film about a white woman who's about to marry a black guy despite her the objections of her parents. Directed by... Uh, and I like how they do like these in quotation marks. What they're doing is like... I, if you ever listen to their podcast, anytime they mention a Jewish name, it's always echoed. Like they always echo anytime someone has a Jewish name. Like Bernie Sanders. So they're kind of doing the same thing in text. Um. Okay. Uh. So they're talking about other things that he supported, as far as uh, you know, because you know, Jews, Jews, Jews. But this whole article, I'm gonna wrap it up because who cares, right? <laughs> you kind of get the idea that they hate the Jews and Donald Trump likes the Jews, and so they're not our guy because he's also he's not as racist as we would like him to be. He talks like someone's grandma in Palm Beach. How can you? Yeah. Yeah. But whatever. But they, they're, they're kind of like saying, like, you know, we, we need to have our white national society just like Europe has. Uh, and then and then the next breath go, oh, yeah, and everybody in, in, in Europe is a cuck. Pick one. Are, are they really that intelligent that, you know, they, they understand the, the importance of a white hegemonic society? Or are they just a bunch of cucks who lets all these people in and rate their, their beautiful white women? You can't have both. You can't have both, right? You know, if we have our white society, we're gonna have you know great, wonderful things. No, you're gonna you're gonna turn it. It's gonna devolve into socialism like every other country. It's not it's not a race thing. They all devolve into socialism. Every country devolves into socialism because you know that's what happens, right? Or fascism. God, I. You know, uh, you could say that true Nazism has never been tried before. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. For, I'm waiting for them to tell me that. <laughs> Hitler, Hitler was on meth toward the end, and he got it a little bit wrong. But yeah, yeah he didn't stay. Just, if 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 you would have just won the war, you know, I I think uh, he didn't stay true to Hitler. <laughs> yeah, Hitler wasn't true enough to Hitler. Yeah, he, he should have gone back and read Mein Kampf. Uh, <laughs> like, bro, do you even read Mein Kampf? <laughs> so yeah, and then you read the comment section, and it's kind of it's kind of split. Uh, people are going like, oh yeah, yeah, he he's been a cuck this he's whole a cuck, time. He's a cuck. Yeah. He's a cuck. He's been he's a closet cuck. Holy sh- holy fuck! Stop eating on air. I'm not talking to you. That's actually one of the comments. I don't understand it because there's not a podcast version of it. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can by all means eat, eat your pizza. You're still eating pizza, right? No, I'm uh my pizza's in the oven, so to speak. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that means a black man's <laughs> having sex with my wife. Oh, okay. Because I've been a closet cuck this whole time, too. Boom. M. Night Shyamalan plot twist. <laughs> you thought it was Trump that was the closet cuck. It turns out it's me. All right. Tyrone, out my wife. And, uh, okay. But speaking of con artists, we, we should wrap it up because you were trying to do this on the fe- Freedom Fiends last night. We were actually recording this the morning after. So we're kind of hung over from the Fiends. But you wanted to, I know you probably want to talk about Tony Styles and actually just get everything off your chest, right? Because I don't think you've done that here. Have you? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, but Tony Styles is a man who is Austin Peterson's campaign manager. And he, as of this morning, I learned that they are trying a new, uh, a new strategy, a new campaign strategy of blocking delegates on Facebook when <laughs> delegates ask them questions. <laughs> I just saw this by the way this morning. Go ahead. Carry yeah. on. Yeah. And uh so anyway, Tony Styles is a reputed con man. Uh there the list of people he has either ripped off or frauded or attempted to defraud through various donation scams is pretty long and it is kind of a who is who uh of people in the liberty movement if you've been around these groups on facebook or anything like that you've probably seen him begging for money for a cause probably fraudulent the first one he did was a bail reimbursement scam where he had a he made up a fake photographer by the name of matt benson uh, who never existed, uh, said he got arrested and that he had paid the bail, but hey, if you folks could find it in your heart to reimburse me, uh, that'd be great. Uh, and then people were like, well, what jail is he in? What, you know, what's the police department? 
And as soon as anybody asked any of those questions, they got blocked. <laughs> and <laughs> that doesn't make you look guilty at all. Uh, and so forth. The second one, he said he needed $10,000 from the IRS or, if, or they were going to imprison him immediately. Uh, That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. If this works. Yeah. That is not how any of this works. Uh, he's He m- routinely will make false claims about his level like degrees he has businesses he's founded his level of money he claims to be a venture capitalist which uh you need an actual level of wealth to call yourself a venture capitalist it's not you you can't like give kids a pound of sugar for their lemonade stand and be like well i've provided seed money i'm an angel uh etc I'm a philanthropist. I, I gave some bum a dollar on the way out of the yep. grocery store. Yep. Says he's a philanthropist because he participated in a radio fundraiser during the short amount of time he worked for a radio station. Which was, um, he wasn't on any radio stations. He was just ready for syndication. Is, yeah. And he will often describe himself as a radio host. He doesn't have a radio show. Go to his website. There, the, uh, He talks about him being a radio host. There's no links to his media anywhere. Why? Because he had a staff that he said he was going to pay and the staff took all of his content hostage and he now can't (laughs) link any of it because he doesn't have control over it. Uh, I have more control over it than he does. And (laughs) yeah, see we're actually on radio and we're actually on stations as you can verify. And he was, and and he's also one of these people like Molyneux who, uh, will, will threaten to sue you except styles has a fake law firm. He like will come after you with fake lawyers, and he's got this army of sock accounts. Um, but yeah, the dude is a scammer, and you should stay far, far away. And he's a legend in his own mind, and like exhibits a lot of addicty type of behavior. And well, I think that might be the real reason that he like sees the need to continue scamming all these people. Yeah, but well, in the words of tu- in the words of Tuesday Flynn, uh, bless your grind. Li- yeah, bless her grind, libertarian good friend of mine. She's probably listening, uh, actually. But go ahead. Yeah, probably <laughs> listening. Uh, in the in the in the in the words of Tuesday Flynn, uh, how important can Tony Styles be? Up until last week, I thought he was black. <laughs> uh, and Molyneux will just will just make a comment like, "Oh, if anyone calls me a cult leader, I'll, I'll sue him." But doesn't do anything after that because then people go, "Oh, well, you're a cult leader. Sue me." Yeah, and nothing happens. But Tony Styles will like make sock send you puppet. a form letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to Legal Zoom <laughs> and send you a cease and desist. Like, uh, I don't think he can afford that. He probably like pirates it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Well, and the thing is, if you if if you are fortunate enough to have his fake lawyers threaten you, and you you copy and paste the text of whatever they send you, you can normally, it'll take you right to the website. And uh, on the one that he sent to a friend of mine, he mixed up the genders because they, uh, it was like a circle one form and it said his, her, and he forgot to delete uh, to make it say just his. Oh. <laughs> it was like, it was like, you need to return, to, you need to return Tony Styles property to him slash her. Yeah. Whoops. <sighs> Fucking and he, uh, Libertarian Party being a natural being a natural home for kooks and people with social retardation and scammers, uh, have seen the perfect confluence of the three and have given Tony Styles his own breakout session at the Libertarian Convention, and yeah, so that is the quality of speaker the Libertarian Party is rolling out with <laughs> these days. <laughs> This 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 whole election has been so bad. Even on the even on the libertarian ticket, where you expect like, okay, maybe, maybe we'll have like a uh, you know Mary Ruart will possibly be on there. Like, you know, like I had like that one problem with her talking about child porn, but then, you know whatever. Uh, but this is like Joy, Joy, I'm Joy Waymeyer's my ride or die. I absolutely I thought she love dropped her. out. She did drop out, but man, when she was gonna have Becky, the first disembodied vice president that she channeled, that was that was when I was full scale on board. Yeah, L- love Joy. So, like, there's a whole bunch of people in the li- uh, Libertarian ticket who who are running who we don't really care about, right? Like, I can't even name these people. I don't even know who they are. And then, and then, like the top tier candidates. Uh, so far, we have McCa- McAfee from McAfee's antivirus. Who is probably insane by all measure, <laughs> by all measurements of, of 
insanity. My friend is his campaign manager, but yeah. Yeah. He's probably insane. Oh, which, which is why I, mean, I like him though. He's in politics. Like you would have to be you'd have to be batshit. Yeah. But it's it's an entertaining batshit. It's not and it's it's one of those entertaining batshits where like, you know, Mexicans aren't getting punched over it. Uh, so yeah. it's you can you can still laugh at it, you know, even to its logical conclusion. Um but and then you have the, him and then you have uh Gary Johnson who I'm sorry. He's is he gay? I mean, you probably have a better gaydar than I do. No, he's he's a long distance runner, and that's a that's a thin, fine distinction as well. Okay, it's similar similar to this other one, yeah. Yeah, but he also wants you know, what is it? <laughs> he wants to make uh, Jews bake Nazis cakes. <sighs> Libertarian, right? Um, I don't know. I think the whole cake baking thing is just as idiotic as the whole like bathroom thing and i predicted the whole bathroom thing too i said it as soon as gay marriage was legalized i was like oh damn here we go transgender bathrooms is going to be the new hill to die on uh <laughs> and here we are yeah current year yeah the, the year the year got really current and i just kept being more and more right so i win yeah i'm, I'm just waiting for like when they actually pass all these laws for actual traps both genders of traps going in and going to the bathrooms and just like going in there as often as they can like every time they have to go to the bathroom, let's, scans. let's go to the There'll mall be... just messing with them just like you know you have you know you're, you're peeing and then you see like this 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 chick walk next to you and you're like and you, you think it's a girl and then she uses the urinal next to you and you're like uh uncomfortable <laughs> but you know there will be retinal scans and when you're declared trans by the government or by the tr board of trans affairs or whatever <laughs> uh they'll give you contacts that will let you into the other genders they that will let you into your new gender's restroom yeah i, I think you, you should be able to go you should go into the one that's going to cause the least amount of conflict if you're passable you probably shouldn't be going into the one you were born into because that's going to make people uncomfortable. The most amount of people uncomfortable on the aggregate. And you should, you should, you, they know. They know if they pass or not. They're not stupid. Some of them are. The Tumblrites are stupid enough to buy it, but I'm sorry. That'd be very uncomfortable for me for to walk into a bathroom and have a girl that like walked in like, I don't know, Bailey J come in and start peeing next to me in the urinal. That's going to be like extremely uncomfortable for me. It's just it's yeah, just dude. Little... Especially when they start talking about socialism. Yeah, <laughs> I don't... they're like, ah, oh, man, I can't wait for Bernie Sanders to be president. It's like, oh, uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I forgot where I was going with that train. We uh, we we went on the Trump train. And choo choo. Jumped... Yeah, we jumped off too too early. Choo, 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 choo. Yeah, we're just we're just like the right stuff. Biz. We're off the Trump train now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Going off the rails. Okay, what so will I, he I remember do what I was without, talking about. Daryl W. Perry. What will Perry, he do without all 85 of those people? We got Daryl W. Perry. What, what, what did you say that ticket was? Him and his vice president. Uh, <laughs> it was. Trump. It was. It was guy who guy who lit. It was. You need to vote guy who lives in a van slash redneck Muslim 2016. Yeah. <laughs> I like Daryl W. Perry, but it's like yeah, I don't. Know, I don't know about a free keener for president. I, I, Is he a free keener? I you know what I I don't think I've ever seen him do any of the Shire choirs See, cause, or cause I, I will workouts. I will let you I will let you stick a gun to someone's head and make them bake a cake before I'll let you stick a camera to a meter maid's head, uh, <laughs> standing around looking pathetic. Yeah, you're a bully. You're a racist. You're a baby killer. It's like no, I'm just a parking meter. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just a parking meter maid. You killed brown babies. Yeah. Um. Uh, so you have racist. that, and then you have Look Austin the Peterson. Way you racistly put those parking tickets on cars. Oh my God, you Klansmen! Yeah, I have a quote unquote legitimate is, yeah. presidential candidate unquote who who has uh, who internet who tough the hell is guide anyone me living personally who internet tough guide me personally. I'm gonna put that link in the show notes so everybody can see it. I'm gonna revive this thing because it's fucking hilarious. He he was saying that at SLPC. International Students for Liberty Conference, whatever the initials is for that thing. Uh, he, he was saying that I was there, and he tried to confront me about his card that was in the game, and I ran like a bitch, and I was like, funny, I've never been to Washington, D.C. in my entire life. <laughs> like, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Oh, and then he was like, oh, well, you, you're fat. I would have noticed your fat face walking around here. Cool. Huh? Yeah. Internet tough guy, and then failed. 
<laughs> Here's my problem. You're, you're uh, who fat. the hell is anyone? Who's anyone living in Keene, New Hampshire, to lecture someone about racism? It's the whitest town. Wait, uh, what? <laughs> like oh, people I in Keene yeah. are like rolling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was pent up. Uh, <laughs> t- 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 rolling around like, oh, you're a racist. You're a ra- yeah, yeah, you live in Keene, all right? Like, why don't you calm down? I see, and that's the thing is, whenever I get called a racist, I could always, always, always pull that ghetto card, and that you know, it, it carries a lot of currency. Yeah, you know, I lived in the ghetto. I I know what it was. I got the hell out. But you seem to enjoy it, right? Am I, is that a fair assessment? Like, I know that you know that you can leave Kensington. I know Bab tells you this all the time, but you stay. Why? <laughs> is it? Is it? You have to like it's it, the right? opera. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but I woke up this morning, made up, made a, made up some coffee, went outside, and there was a wonderful fight happening because nice. somebody caught someone stealing things while they were asleep, and they were getting to scrapping. And uh, I said good morning to everybody and let them listen to the fight for like a good fifteen seconds or so. Nice. So, uh, coming soon to the Steve Miller Miller Twitter page at Miller Twice on Twitter will be Kensington Fight Audio. Uh, take it from my backyard. And hopefully in the summer we can get to the full orchestra. There's this thing I call the Kensington Orchestra where you have like the percussion section, which is the cop helicopters like over top. And then you've got like sirens, like preferably coming towards you, but going away from you is also compression rarefaction uh then you the, got fighting the Fighting's Doppler big. effect yeah and then you got your vocals which is generally uh music blasted out of cars uh sometimes going past but sometimes just sitting on the block for hours on end uh and if any if any pop star recently died then it is a foregone conclusion that you will be hearing their greatest hits album for a week straight uh as we i've been hearing prince nonstop. oh yeah uh yeah, 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 yeah. So, but it's 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 like one of the wisest things uh, anybody in this town has ever said to me, which is, uh, Steve, you got to remember that there's three kinds of people that when you're interacting with black people in Philadelphia that you don't talk bad about, and that is Jesus, Obama, and any white celebrity who just died. Uh, that's the black holy trinity. Really? Yeah. And uh, they, they they won't stand for any disrespect of uh, of any of the three, but I mean, obviously, it would also extend to Prince as well. Yeah, he, he kind of had that Michael Jackson thing going on. Just tried to be as white as he could. Ee-hee. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, I'm still I'm still waiting for someone besides Motorhead that I actually really listen to to die, so that I can be like, oh, oh, I was a huge fan and not lie. <laughs> I, I to be fair, I was like a fan for about like a year when I was in like elementary school. Of Prince, uh, when he had that was that album with the most beautiful girl in the world. Like I was all into R and B and stuff, and that was like when it came out. I was like, ah. But then I grew out of it, and I just stopped caring about Prince. And I didn't realize he actually had some good stuff. Other than that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, well that's interesting, uh, but never really caught on to it. Same with David Bowie. Oh, it's on. I can listen to it. It's not bad. I'm not going to put it on myself. Uh, and I'm not I'm not gonna knock hard them. for yeah. likes and be like oh it influenced my entire life like yeah. because people are temporarily into them like that's so stupid and comedians do that shit all the time yeah uh, I didn't really yeah. like Ro- uh, Robin Williams outside of a few movies yeah I didn't like his stand up he was a little too uh, ADD for me and I'm have ADD. I ever told you my theory on Robin Williams suicide no what is this is, is it is it because his wife is a bitch and took nope. all of his money. Okay. No. Nope. So it's actually based in reality. Yep. Okay. I have a theory that the reason Robin Williams killed himself had absolutely nothing to do with him, like having some de- like degenerative disease that he was afraid would, like totally cripple him. I don't think it had to do with his depression. I don't think or it had him to do actually with money being pro- a degenerate. Right. I don't think it had to do with money problems. <laughs> I don't think it had to do with drugs. I well, it had indirectly it had to do with money problems, but. I think what happened is he – so a lot of people don't know this, but like about a month before he died, he had just – they he signed on for the development phase of Mrs. Doubtfire 2. Uh, and I have – and I think that he read the script to Mrs. Doubtfire 2 and then just went and killed himself. 
And he was like, I've got to save the world from this movie ever being made. And then he did the most heroic thing possible by making sure that Mrs. Doubtfire 2 was never, ever made because we were getting close. And he saved humanity. And he's really a martyr on par with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, I, now I have a lot of respect, a lot more respect for the guy. I mean, he was a good comedian, but now I actually have like, this guy actually did something wonderful for the world. He prevented this yeah. travesty from being created. Mm-hmm. Man, I never thought of that. That's actually, man, I'm, I need to reflect on this. Because you know that script had to be dog shit, right? Of you course. Know that, like, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can I'm you sure imagine he, like, Popeye too. Imagine if he was like, oh, "I'm gonna recreate Popeye again." Like, oh, Doubtfire two, and the, the, no, we're done. Yeah, Mr. Hiller, I'm, uh, I'm gonna keep you away from your children again. Whatever you do, don't hire another housekeeper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's a there's a Philadelphia comedian named Alex Grubard. Uh, kind of underrated comedian and he does this bit about how he used to work at a video store and he's like if you and he's got this voice and he goes if you never worked at a video store you never will and uh does he ask he you like, which was... one do you like best empire or jedi strikes back a lot nah okay but he he said there's only one he's like my entire training at the video store consisted of two steps one here's how to make sure a tape is rewound uh, and two, when someone rents porn, don't laugh directly in their face. And uh, I'll never forget the first porn I ever rented someone. It was Booty Duty 3. <laughs> and I thought, I already know the plot of this movie. Johnson? Because you know the guy's name was Johnson. You're on Booty Duty. Now don't let whatever happened the last two times happen again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. so that, yeah, that's always a yeah, yeah. but you know I, I think, and, the, and, and the second the second porno he ever read it was called crack attack I, and, I, I guarantee you the joke that he said pop not even thinking about like this joke's been made a million times like did you see the first two it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense if you didn't see the first two right uh, I, yeah. I, I, i'm so tired of that joke but every, it's, it's yeah. brought up every time oh. there's a sequel anytime that someone mentions a porn sequel it's like oh i didn't see the first two have you guys seen Crack Attack? Have you seen Crack Attack? No. Crack Attack is what happens when no one's on booty duty. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a nice little scam going with uh I actually no I did. Has this been seven years? Has this been it's been I think it's, it has been seven years since. But I used to go down to the uh, video store and rent porn and copy them. And then I had a friend who was a pot dealer and he would he ins- like he would give me a gram for every porn DVD that I burned for him. And so I would just go out and like, like, who do you like today? Oh, Jesse Jane. All right, we're gonna go make a bunch of Jesse Jane uh, uh, porn. <laughs> like, what, what? Rent all the videos with, and then I'd have a stack of them. And anytime I needed a gram, I'd be like, oh, I got more porn for you. Those were the days. Those were you the know? days. Yeah, but um, I don't think I've ever got laughed at. I mean, there were some some pretty weird titles. Uh, you hold the key to my ass. That was probably my favorite porn title of all time. You hold the key to my ass. Uh, it was not gay. It was not gay, by the way. It was There it was, was one that porn. was not gay that I saw one time called Fuck My Dirty Shithole the Movie. And I was like, man, I wonder if it's based on Fuck My Dirty Shithole the Children's Book. <laughs> the porn title the Braille be, yeah. Children's Book for the <laughs> blind children. Uh, yeah. Porn titles. We should do a whole right. show on that. Actually, no, we shouldn't. Um, all right. Was there anything else we wanted to cover, or is that it? Read some Louis Grizzard. Uh, if you're if you're looking for things with great titles, there was a Southern humorist who died in like 1994 named Louis Grizzard. G R I Z Z A R D. Uh, the titles of his books are great. Every single one of his books is fantastic. I highly recommend. Don't bend over in the garden, Granny. You know them taters got eyes. <laughs> um, but. You you could find Louis Grizzard's books super cheap. Go get yourself one. They're funny as shit. <laughs> they like why you can get them on Amazon. Oh please. Oh yeah. Go. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put an affiliate link. Definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna buy this just for. Uh, I actually have a book. Like I I was into. I'm still into collecting cult books. If you have a cult book, I want it. Send it to me. I'll pay for the shipping. 
But uh, I used to collect cult books, and they had this one book that I got, and it wasn't a cult I don't, that, that put these out that I know of. But they put out, like, all these crappy, like, Christian books, and I stumbled on this, and I, I got one It was because it was free and because of the title. It was uh, Eat My eat my Flesh and Drink My Blood, and I had a picture <laughs> of Jesus. I've heard of this, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, holy shit, that title alone is fucking gold, so I ended up getting that. And some other book, too, that was, but they were free, uh, free shipping. They were just trying to pump out the literature. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Books fiend with, e-books are free. Oh, Fiend e-books. That's, those are the best e-books. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so yeah, Louis Grizzard. Can, can you just my, name a couple plug. of titles as we, as we kind of scroll out with music? Elvis is dead and I don't feel so good myself. Uh, I took a lick at it, kept on ticket, and now I believe in miracles is the name of his memoir. You can't put no boogie woogie on the king of rock and roll. Uh, when my when my date returns from the ladies' room, will I be too old to care? Um, yeah. They, they they run the gamut. Kathy Sue Loudermilk, I love you. That's like there's a lot of ones about his three divorces, because uh, he'd been divorced a whole fuck ton of times, and then he died when he was like in his early fifties or so. Uh, but led a really interesting life and kept kept his head up the entire time. And yeah, bless his grind and bless your grind for anybody who's who is going to heed to my words and go read some Louis Grizzard. And if there's like even two or three people other than you who are reading Louis Grizzard and who would want to start a Louis Grizzard book club on Facebook, I will I will start that secret ass group. Real t- real tea, real tea. Also, uh, uh, YouTube search uh, gay black couple fighting Chicago. Uh, highly, highly recommend the first 10 minute long uh, reality show type clip that comes up when you search gay black couple fighting Chicago. Uh, the person who turned me on to it uh, has been unable to speak to me about anything except that video says. Cortez, let me see your phone. Uh, highly recommend it. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, For some reason in, the, in this country, and in a bunch of western world, it's okay to just dodge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com. But we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.